dear student welcome to the msbt's online teaching learning platform myself professor harish ringe working as hod civil at csms college of polytechnic kanchanwadi aurangabad today we are going to study about uh, the construction of superstructure uh, the next content uh, that is being uh, we are supposed to deal with the second content that is the uh, major features of the stone masonry and in that uh, particular uh, chapter or the particular content we are going to deal with the learning objectives which are nothing but uh, describe the major features of the given type of stone masonry construction then you will be able to describe the importance of the through stone after studying this uh, lecture you will be explain different types of the stone masonry then you can differentiate between rubble masonry and ashlar masonry so these are all the four major things that uh, you are going to study or you are going to learn uh, in this upcoming lecture so basically what uh, content we are going to study uh, that we will uh, look after in this uh, slide so the first and foremost thing we are going to see about the facing backing hurting through stone corner stone cornice uh, these are the nomenclature that we are uh, going to use in stone masonry and after that uh, we are going to study about the uh, different types of the stone masonry uh, in which the different types of stone masonry are rubble masonry and ashlar masonry so again about the concept map uh, in building construction we are dealing with uh, the selecting the suitable type of the masonry for building structure wherein we are on the second stage now that is describe the major features of the given type of the stone masonry so this is nothing but concept map okay so just uh, let us start uh, with the uh, things that we are supposed to study about stone masonry so in stone masonry uh, the definition of stone masonry is nothing but the construction of a stones bonded together with the mortar is called as a stone masonry uh, obviously the stones are generally available through natural sources the sizes of the stones depends on the availability and requirement how uh, which quality of rock is available on the site uh, from where you are quarrying uh, that is dependent on that and that's why the size and uh, size of the stones depends on the availability and the requirement after stone uh, we will require sand again for bonding purpose uh, the granular material composed of finely divided rock and mineral particles it is defined by size being finer than gravel and coarser than uh, silt uh, this is nothing but a sand which we are going to use and again as uh, we have used uh, the cement in brick masonry so same as a binding we are going to use a uh, particular uh, cement over here and that's why with the help of the this particular uh, sand and cement we are going to prepare a uh, mortar and will the help of mortar the bonding of the stones are going to be uh, happen in the stone masonry so let's uh, discuss about some of the uh, things that we are Uh, looking in this particular lecture so the facing the as already we have seen the face is nothing but uh, the visible face of any of the wall is nothing but the face and the material whichever we are used for this face is called as a facing then backing the backing is nothing but the internal surface of the wall is called as back and the material used on the back is called as a backing so basically the face uh, already we have seen that the face is nothing but the visible surface and that's why the material used for face is called as a facing and the backing is nothing but the internal surface of the wall is called as a back and the material used for back uh, the wall of that back is called as a backing again the hurting is nothing but uh, the material that is being filled in between face and back is called as a hurting as same nomenclature uh, were used in the brick masonry uh, the same we are supposed to use in the uh, stone masonry always uh, as well you can see over here that as this is the outer surface and that's why uh, this particular surface will be called as a face and the material which is used on this uh, face will be called as a facing so ashlar masonry is being used and that's why the facing material is ashlar masonry this is uh, what the backing of rubble masonry rubble masonry is there on the back of the uh, particular wall and that's why 
this material is nothing but a backing over here so this was facing and backing is now uh, the through stone generally when we are uh, going for a construction of the masonry at that time uh, we are supposed to provide some of the through stones over here so you can just observe that the through stones are uh, nothing nothing but the throughout uh, one stone is being provided throughout the thickness of the wall where the thickness is somewhat smaller but when the thickness is larger the two different uh, through stones you can use like this and that's why to provide a proper bonding of the masonry uh, we are supposed to provide uh, such a kind of the through stones so uh, this is the particular phenomenon that is very important while going for and constructions of the stone masonry so in stone masonry a stone is supposed to be placed right across the wall to provide a proper bonding and strength to the wall such a type of stones are supposed to be provided at regular interval and are called as a through stones so uh, right placed right across the wall it means that uh, throughout the wall we are supposed to provide it so the full thickness of the wall is nothing but equal to the thickness of the through stones in some of the cases where the wall thickness of the stone masonry is considerably large and needs to be constructed in stone masonry through stones can be provided by providing overlap to each other as i already told you that if thickness is larger then you can just place the through stone like this then we can see the corner stone as uh, these are the stones placed at the corner of the stone masonry it is also called as the first stone of the masonry as it is being placed at first for look, taking the reference of the line so the first stone which is we are keeping at the corner that can be called as a corner stone and it can be used as a reference for the lining of the other particular brick mas uh, stone masonry and that's why this is being called as a corner stone so corner stones are provided in any kind of the stone masonry should be of proper size and shape so that it provide proper shape for lining and good strength to the masonry so it should be of proper size and shape then the cornice the cornice is nothing but uh, it is a projecting ornamental course usually molded to add to the appearance of the wall a cornice is placed in a wall at the junction of the wall and roof so might be you have observed that at the junction of the wall and roof uh, such a kind of the ornamental uh, shapes are being provided and this particular shapes provided at this particular location is called as a cornice and this these uh, cornices are basically provided to increase the aesthetical view of the uh, construction work or the stone masonry work then now uh, just coming to the point of the uh, different types of the stone masonry so as already we have seen that there are two uh, basic classifications or the different types of the masonry the one is the rubble masonry and second one is the ashlar masonry so the rubble masonry uh, is the stone masonry type where stones used are either undressed or roughly dressed got from quarry this type of masonry can be used where the specific size and shape of the masonry is not needed so you can observe that uh, these are the stones which were used in masonry as are not of any particular size and shape so uh, these particular stones are brought from the quarry and uh, have used directly without dressing and providing any shape and size and that's why uh, this type of the masonry is called as the rubble masonry so the strength of the rubble masonry is dependent on the quality of the mortar used use of the long through stones proper filling of the mortar between the stone space and joints when you are going for an constructions of the stone masonry with rubble masonry uh, you should keep in mind these three things that the quality of mortar used means the strength of the masonry is dependent on the quality of mortar used use of the long through stones the proper filling of mortar between the stone spaces and joints so depend on these three uh, the strength of the rubble masonry is dependent then the rubble masonry can be subdivided into uh, the following types the first one is coursed rubble masonry uncoursed rubble masonry dry rubble masonry polygonal masonry and flint masonry so this will be the five different types of the masonry that uh, we are going to deal with the, in rubble masonry so what is what do you mean by exactly coarse rubble masonry so as we know that the rubble means uh, rubble masonry means the uh, 
particular stones are not having any proper size and shape but still if you are providing a proper course with the help of this uh, unshaped or uh, undressed stones it can be possible that to provide a coarse trouble masonry so in coarse trouble masonry construction the stones in a particular course are in equal heights the stones hence used possesses different sizes in this type all the course do not have same height this type is commonly employed in the construction of public buildings abutments residential buildings and piers of ordinary buildings so this type of masonry is plays an important role in such a kind of the conditions or such a kind of the buildings now uncoarse trouble masonry so as uncoarse trouble masonry as its name suggest uh, no any courses are being there uh, randomly it can be kept uh, the different part of the uh, different materials or the stones on one or another other uh by putting some of the small stones in between the large stones and the courses or the particular masonry is being constructed so uncoursed rubble masonry is the cheapest and roughest form of the stone masonry construction this construction use stones of varied shape and size the stones are directly taken from the quarry called as undressed stone blocks the courses is not maintained regular in this method of construction initially larger stones are laid first the spaces between them are filled with the spalls or snakes this is divided into two types again this uncoarse rubble masonry will be divided into two different types which is nothing but random uncoarse rubble masonry and square uncoarse rubble masonry so t now uh, we will uh, we have seen all the content over here up to this so we will stop over here and uh, hope you have understood all the things in this lecture uh, keep learning and keep studying thank you thank you very much